All right, so I'm going to do an update to what has been the most popular video on my channel, which ain't saying much, about a little over 9,000 views. It's a small channel, um, but it, it nevertheless is the most popular video on my channel, and it was where I took this uh, image right here, and I extended the background to the edge, and I primarily at that time used Content Aware Fill to sort of, you know, select these areas and use content or fill to fill in the edges and then the paintbrush to kind of smooth everything out. So since that time, and I'll link that video up here, uh, since that time, some new tools have come out in Photoshop, most notably the generative AI fill. So uh, also I think the remove tool has come out since then. I've been using it a little bit lately. Maybe I didn't notice it before. Uh, I'm not a Photoshop uh expert quote unquote i used uh, i learned the things that i need to in photoshop as a photographer <laughs> to get the things done that i need to get done and this was one of them right so as i said in the last video this is not the way to do it you want to get it right in camera right and that still stands i stand with that statement if you're going to do a full body shot get bigger background paper get a bigger background don't do this but if you're in a small space and you want a full body shot and you have photoshop uh, and you want to do this, then, you know, this is the only way you're going to get around it, right? With that small paper like this, you're going to have to Photoshop it. So, and this is pretty common actually for a lot of people who photograph dancers, maternity with the sweeping um, dress materials that are flying out, they extend it out, right? Um, it's a pretty common thing. Uh, this is probably unnecessary. I could have used a bigger background, but I didn't. So let's try it again now. Is it faster? Is it better? Is it easier with generative AI fill? That's what I want to know. Uh, are the new tools any better? Do they save me time? So let's crop it for starters. Uh, we'll, I don't know. We'll do the Instagram crop. I get so tired of doing Instagram crop, but we'll do it. Four by five crop. So all I did was I hit this crop tool. I set my crop to four by five up here, right? And then I clicked to activate it. Very important, otherwise some janky things start to happen. So click one time till you see these crossbars, right? Then you know you're good. And then just hit either the check up here or just you can hit um, enter as well. And that's going to crop it. Now, I just kept the background default. It gave me a bar there. That's fine. I don't care. We're going to hopefully generative AI fill is going to fill all that in for me. That's the goal. So let's do just because it's good edit kit, a control J to duplicate the background. That way we have the original picture in this layer underneath. We can always go back to it and it's not modified, right? So uh, let's use the lasso tool. I could kind of come here and, uh, you know, try to lasso her, but actually let's use that remove tool. Uh, this tape is up here. It's in my way kind of when I'm making these selections. So let's kind of zoom in and, you know, um, I just used painter's tape that day. I didn't have a stand to uh, remove the, uh, to hang this paper up on, right? So let's come here. And for some reason it is not working. Why? Because I was on the background layer. Genius, man, genius. But that is a gotcha. Um, if you're doing things and you end up and it's not working, um, see what layer you're on, right? I was on the background layer. You gotta be on this layer up here. This layer is covering up that background layer. So anything, if I'm down here trying to do stuff, I can't see it. Big time got you for beginners. Can't tell you how many times as a beginner I did stuff like that. I'm on the wrong layer. You're trying to follow instructions and you're on the wrong layer um, because the person instructing you didn't remind you, for one, right? And you're new. It's not your fault. Give yourself a break. So I just used the remove tool, got rid of my tape. My high-tech painter's tape to <laughs> put this backdrop up. All right. Um, control zero recenters everything for you, right? Pretty cool. Uh, control minus, maybe give me a little room to work. Okay, so I'm going to use the lasso tool because really I want to get as much information as I can about this background, right? And I'm terrible at manual selections. Don't laugh. All right. So I want to get as much information as I can about this backdrop to give the generative AI fill some frame of reference, right? Like um, if uh, I'm not going to give it a prompt because 
for the love of God, every time I give it a prompt, it just makes things worse. So I'm not going to give it a prompt, try to tell it what to do. I'm going to let it figure out on its own what to do, but I'm going to help it by including some of this background in, in here. And hopefully it'll go, oh, it's a plain um, background. Let me just extend it to the edge. So that's what we're going to do. Generative fill right here. Hit the button. Not going to give it a prompt. And we're going to hit generate. My AI prompting has much to be desired. So is this going to be easier? Is it going to be better? Is it going to be more efficient? You know, before I was swiping, I was doing content over fill. I was doing all this stuff. And another gotcha, because uh, I was talking too much. Um, this is perfect if you want to remove the subject from the background, right? Just killer, right? Killer job at doing that. Unfortunately, that's not what I wanted to do. So let me control Z, right? Missed a very important step. You can click on this little icon here, which is invert selection, or you can right click and choose select inverse. So I want to, I don't want to remove her. I want to, I want to work on this background back here and I want it to fill the background. I don't want it to fill her. Okay. So Right click, select inverse is what I did. And you can see the marching ants all around it. All right, so let's try it again. Generate a fill, generate, okay. And okay, you know, it's still, I think it beats what I was doing actually. You know, I had to wait a minute and the reason it's a little bit slow because it's doing all this in the cloud, right? Uh, when you're doing a commenter told me, appreciate you guys' comments, by the way, that are constructive <laughs> comments. Most of them are, um, you know, said, well, the reason your content aware fill is really fast when you're working on backgrounds is because you're working locally. You're not doing it in the cloud. Um, when you're doing it in the generative AI, it's going out to the cloud to pull down the information, right? So here's um, result number one. If you look down here, you have one out of three. You can go to the right or you can click on the pictures up here. Uh, there's number two, gives you some moody vibe there, a little bit more shadow. Number three, another moody vibe. It depends on what you like. Um, I kind of like number one. It's the cleanest. There's a little stuff on the edge here, easily fixed though. Um, for a one-click thing, you know, other than making the selection, a lot easier, a lot more efficient. I could fix this little thing on the edge here. Um, well, let's do that. Um, I'll try just the marquee tool right and let's do the content aware fill shift f5 actually i've got to here's the thing once you're on this fill layer if you like this go ahead and flatten it all down commit that change i like it all right that's pretty good oh and you know what it did get rid of when i flattened it down it got rid of that little thing interesting okay i told you guys i wasn't an expert so i don't know what just happened there <laughs> but it was a happy accident all right, so happy accident. We're good. Um, I I think this is a usable image as is. I could pack up and go home right now. I mean, I'm good. There's a little bit of, you know, weird light. Looks like weird light fall off that, um, you know, being the perfectionist that I am, I can't leave it alone. So um, I'm still, I still use the paint method to kind of blend things a little bit. Um, some of you have commented that using the, uh, frequency separation method works as well. You can use the mixer brush tool with frequency separation, not even going to get into it. I've tried it. Arguably that works better. I don't think so. Um, I'm used to the paintbrush tool and I'll tell you why. Um, I've got my own action. It's a select subject, select inverse. It just does it for me in one click. Okay. We already went over select subject, select inverse earlier. Remember we forgot to select the inverse. So this just did it all in one step. It selected her, then it selected the background. I just have my own little button, right? Saves me an immense amount of, immense amount of time because I do this all the time. So click on the brush tool, like uh, right here, okay? And you want to make sure that the hardness is not set to any, it's set to 0%, right? And we want the flow to be about 10 to 15%. I'll put it to 15%. I'll use the right bracket or left bracket key to resize it. Usually this works better when you have a large brush like this because you're just going to make, we're not going to muscle it in. We're going to be very subtle with it. So I'm going to hold down the alter option on the keyboard, right? That gives me the dropper. And I'm going to try to pick sort of a in-between color, like maybe this right here, right? And I'm just going to 
swipe, you see how that I'm just kind of blending it, right? And that blended that pretty well. You know, maybe I grab that right there. And so that's pretty good. Blend this. I like, you know, this light color behind her like that. Like maybe I'll kind of do this just to kind of, it's almost like a, a little bit of a spotlight behind her. Now, I like the shadow because it gives me the sense of depth, right? So I'm not going to really do much with that. I'm going to leave that. And just a little bit, just like that, uh, you know, maybe we just kind of do a little bit. I don't go overboard, okay? And just like that, we've got a pretty good, clean backdrop. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to say, I'm going to give it to Generative AI. I'm going to say that it did a really uh, great job. It was faster even though it does it in the cloud and you got to kind of wait for it in this case it was faster it was more efficient um and i think it was easier than the last video so what do you guys think um are you enjoying the new ai tools what help me out in the comments what prompts have you used to fill the background that seem to be consistently work for you because i'll tell it fill the background that's really the only thing i can think of you know or or uh, fill the background to the edge with the same color as the selection, or I've tried all kinds of things and they don't work. So put in the comments things that have worked for you, things that could improve my process. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the update to this video. And as always, I appreciate you, watch, appreciate you watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff, and have a good one.